Hello and welcome to the channel Mom This Is Knowledge and I am your host. Hello and welcome to the second episode in this four part series on the history and evolution of flight. Now just to recall, in the first episode we have begun to explore man's fascination with flight and his early efforts to create lighter than air devices. Now in this episode, here with me, you will watch man finally invent a hot air balloon, learn about the discovery of hydrogen and how it changed flight forever and understand how man moved away from lighter than aircraft with one of the worst disasters in aviation history. Now back to the granddads of flight. Now the hot air balloon and its better version, the hydrogen balloon. The hot air balloons float because hot air rises by heating the air inside the balloon with the help of a burner. The air becomes lighter than the cooler air on the outside. Now the hot air rises and this causes the balloon to float upwards. Now remember. The spark of discovery at a point in time lights a spark elsewhere and together these discoveries give shape to something durable and enduring. And it's not always the scientist who bears the invention. It may take a scientist, a chemist, a professor, a merchant, a paper manufacturer to join forces and become the heroes of flight. A bit of science 101. Now, 2000 years ago, in the 3rd century BC, it was the Greek scientist Archimedes who really laid out the principle of how physical objects float using liquids and gases. Now, so for 2000 years, until 1766, we had just a theory to lift objects, but the elements to lift objects were yet still unknown. Now, in 1766, our hero, an English chemist by the name of Henry Cavendish, ended the drought of knowledge. Now, Mr. Cavendish discovered that hydrogen was much lighter than atmospheric air. Now, all mankind needed was just to figure out that hydrogen could actually lift an object in the air. Enter our next hero, Joseph Black, the professor of chemistry at the University of Edinburgh, who did just that. He suggested that a weight might be lifted from the ground by attaching it to a sphere of hydrogen gas. And now the last cog in the wheel, an Italian merchant by the name of Tiberius Cavallo put into practice the combined efforts of Archimedes, Henry Cavendish and Joseph Black. And in the year 1782, Tiberius Cavallo collected hydrogen gas in soapy water and bubbles of gas ascended into the air. And so the soap-filled bubble of hydrogen was really the first balloon that used hydrogen as the gas to lift an object. And voila! Now we had a theory for lighter than air flight and its demonstration and all we needed were the pioneers who would use hot air and thereafter hydrogen to lift the first hot balloons into the skies. Now before we meet the first pioneers, it's good to know that even though at the time it was widely known that hydrogen was lighter than air, hydrogen was not the fuel to lift the first balloons in the sky. It was hot air. And then came along the Montgolfier brothers. And according to legend, the French brothers Joseph and Jacques Montgolfier, while staring at the fireplace, became interested in the force that caused the sparks and the smoke to rise. Now the brothers thought that burning created a gas which they called Montgolfier gas. And they didn't realize that the heated air around the fire was lighter than the surrounding air and that the embers actually arose with the heated air and not actually the smoke or some miraculous gas. 
And so in 1783, the Montgolfier brothers flew an unmanned 35 feet wide hot air balloon using the heat from a fire lit from straw. And so impressed was King Louis XVI of France with the Montgolfier brothers that they were honored with the Order of Saint Michel. And since then, all hot air balloons came to be known as Montgolfiers. Now there is a problem, and that is hot air isn't efficient when flying balloons over long distances. And by the time the Montgolfi brothers had flown their balloon using hot air, hydrogen had been discovered. So it was natural that eventually someone would fly a balloon powered by hydrogen. And here is where all those various discoveries spanning two millennia came together to create that marvelous final piece of innovation the balloon of the modern era, powered by hydrogen. A French physicist called Charles created a much larger model of the Montgolfier balloon that was powered by hydrogen. And so on December 1st, 1783, Charles hopped into his balloon and flew it further than the Montgolfier brothers had using their hot air balloon. Take that, Montgolfier brothers! Ballooning quickly evolved from being just a sport for the wealthy into a weaponized tool that would give its owner an aerial advantage during conflict. In an early example, when the Prussian army laid siege on Paris in 1870, the whole of Paris was cut off from the rest of France. And left with few options, the French government, in desperation, allowed the balloonists to ascend from the city safely out of reach of the Prussian army and descend into the French countryside and deliver vital dispatches or letters. In all, 57 flights were marked as successful out of the 67 flights conducted during the siege. Now, This event thus marked the commencement of the first airline in the world. Although now man had taken to flight, there was still another problem that man had to overcome. The balloon was just not steerable. It was still at the mercy of the winds. So the first idea of a steerable or dirigible balloon was proposed by another Frenchman named Musnier in 1784. But it was not until 1800s when the idea really bore shape. Now this is when the place of design and the holy grounds of change shifted from France to Germany. Now steerable airships or dirigibles as they came to be known gained in size and power. The German engineer Ferdinand Zeppelin would count as among the foremost designers of such craft. Now after a string of failures, Zeppelin successfully launched his airship the LZ-3 in 1906. It was a behemoth, a sight from the legends, one that would amaze man for its sheer size and grandeur. The airship was more than 400 feet long, made of aluminium and powered by two 16 horsepower engines. The airship flew 67 miles in two hours and marked the beginning of the first full-scale military craft to be used extensively in military and civil aviation. Now, through the First World War, Zeppelins were used by the Germans to bomb Paris and London. But Zeppelins and dirigibles in general were expensive to manufacture, slow and vulnerable to weather. Now, the Hindenburg was the largest and the last of the dirigibles to fly. When in 1937 got fire, its very fate bearing to ground also the fate of the dirigibles with it. Eventually, lighter than air aviation lost out to heavier than air aviation. And this is where our next episode commences. So I truly hope you enjoy the content. You learned a little. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, share the love and adios and namaste until the next video. Cheers. Bye.